Welcome to Politics Done Right. I am your host, Egberto Willis. This is a progressive program that will take the mystery out of politics. This is the program that will encourage you to make sure government becomes we the people. Whether you are liberal, progressive, conservative, or otherwise, you get to hear your point of view. We are an independent media outlet that, unlike mainstream media beholden to corporations, we only owe allegiance to you. Remember, you can also send me a tweet at E-G-B-E-R-T-O-W-I-L-L-I-E-S. That is at Egberto Willis. Let us engage. It is Politics Done Right. Welcome to Politics Done Right from the studios of KPFT 90.1 FM, Houston, your community radio station. We have a great program for you today. This week, I am at Netroots Nation 2022. Uh, I have a myriad, uh, scores of interviews that I've done with activists, with leaders, uh, with prospective politicians, etc., that I think over the next few weeks, as I play them, uh, it's going to be of great interest for all of you because it's about democracy. And these are people that are willing and ready to fight to keep it. Uh, this year's Net Roots Nation was a real grassroots effort. And in as much as we are in a fund drive, you're gonna get a good program, you're gonna get substantive programming, and starting after, uh, as, as we come to you in the next few weeks, you're gonna be hearing a whole lot of what your fellow Americans, not only in Texas, but throughout the country, are actually thinking it was great being uh, here in Pittsburgh and seeing our Texas activists and activists from all over really start performing and doing what we need to get done. So stay tuned. Welcome to another edition of Politics Done Right. I'm Egberto Willis, your host. First of all, folks, you all know that our show is governed by whom? The people who own our show, our audience. And with us today, we are blessed to have who we call Bridge MCP. I call her Bridge MCP. I don't know if she wants to use her real name or not. She'll tell us that later on. But she is one of our leaders in the PDR Posse. She came across an article at, uh, written that was posted at the coffee party that she said needed some more context than that. She wrote out something and I said, you know what? We need you as somebody from Ireland to make the point. Welcome to Politics Done Right. Bridge MCP. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. Okay. I always call you Bridge MCP. What should That's I my name. Huh? That is my name. Okay, good. Well, it's not my full last name, but my first name. Okay, well, good. Great. Great to have you here. Hey, Bridge, you saw, first of all, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, well, I was born in Belfast, and I came here because my mother didn't want to go through the troubles. They were just really starting to get bad. And uh, her and my brother, me and my brother were born there. We came here. And then when I was about... I don't know, 16, 17, I started to go back home. My father was already very much involved before he left Ireland in the whole fight and freedom of Ireland. And so we were all involved in that. We grew up with it. And my entire family on my father and mother's side are there. So they were dealing with it. So anyway, my father was going back and forth. And I started going back and forth when I got older. I would go like twice a year. I almost moved there. Because I wanted to join, you know, to help the fight. But that's uh, the IRA, right? I didn't want to call it that. <laughs> well, let me tell you why, why I, I put it that way, uh, Bridge. Because the way I see it, we always hear the story, all these stories from sort of a black, white, good, bad point of view. Right. And one of the reasons I wanted to uh, have you on is you're an Irish person. You grew up in Northern, or rather, you started off in Northern Ireland, Belfast. Right. And there are issues there. And there's this phrase that always says, one man's uh, freedom fighter is another's terrorist. Yeah. I mean, um, what do we call 
uh, when America moved westward and did what it took to move right. westward. What do we talk about how the formation of Panama occurred when the United States put a battleship in, in the Gulf of Colón and said, hey, you guys are now an independent country. We want a canal. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there, there are a lot of these features. So what we try to do here, Beach, and what I was really excited to speak to you about, uh, about this article was that you said this article made a horrendously bad frame in it. It doesn't matter whether you think uh, the IRA was a terrorist organization or mm -hmm. not. What's important is how they characterize the IRA and the Republican Party. So please elaborate on that, because I think you did a wonderful job. Well, in, in the article, it was only the first two paragraphs that, that compared the GLP to Sinn Féin. Right. Is, Explain who Sinn Féin is, actually. Well, Sinn Féin is pretty much the political arm of the IRA. The IRA became two fractions. I mean, they started in the 1900s. They didn't call them them that, and um, then, but there's two fractions. There was um, they they started to split as things got worse or better, depending. So when Ireland finally split and got its independence, the IRA was still around, but a part of it was becoming too violent, and another part of it didn't want to be. So you had the provincial IRA, and um, or Pyra, and then you had the official. On the other side, and they, they actually had a nickname. I don't remember what it was. So the one was more political, and one was more violent. And then we had Sinn Féin, which became the political side of the IRA. And all of them altogether are all socialists, which our GRP are not. So right off the bat, I was, are you kidding me? And and they portrayed the IRA as the the muscle part of, of Sinn Féin. Now, I'm not disagreeing with that. I'm disagreeing with the way they said it. It is an Irish saying. It's not what you said. It's the dirty way you said it. So I was disagreeing with that, that they're not really the muscle man. And in comparison to the article, they were saying more or less the GOP is Sinn Féin and the Proud Boys and the Oath Keepers are the IRA. And I was like, are you out of your lunatic mind? These people have nothing to do with saving their country. They're actually destroying our country, but they have nothing to do with Sinn Féin or Ireland or the IRA or trying to save their country or trying to break out of British claws. If everybody remembers history, British owned everything. They colonized everywhere. And they did it to Scotland and Wales and, and Ireland. And um, people don't realize there's Great Britain and then there's the United Kingdom. Great Britain is just England. Right. United Kingdom is their conglomerate over there. And so the article bothered me in two ways. One, that the coffee party actually said they agree with it. What are your thoughts? And I was like, I'm not sure what they agreed with. Let, let, let me say that as, as a member of the coffee party, I can say that um, that it's not, we don't, they don't the, the coffee party do not take the position on these articles officially. Because, I mean, just like uh, you objected to that uh, article that labels Sinn Féin, uh, my, many of my articles aren't appreciated necessarily by all those in the coffee party. Right. So what I wanted to do in speaking to you as well is giving you that platform that could actually, you are, I mean, what I, what I love about this is that you are from, uh, from Ireland. You do have authority on the message as opposed to a third party revealing something from yet a third party officiated right. likely by a government. So mm -hmm. I take credence with what you have to say more so than I do somebody who's just regurgitating otherwise. Other somebody else. Well, you know, the thing about it is, I think I sent you a link to the man that wrote the article, Professor yes. Georgetown. And um, so I actually clicked on him and then I read the comments that people were writing about the article. I don't know if you read them. But in there, they were putting down the coffee party. They were shocked like I was. And also putting down the actual title, Sinn Féin, like the GOP. They were like, everybody was going out of their minds for, for that. They were like, how could you do this? So the, the reason why I bring up the coffee party is because they had to have read it. They said, they, they said, we agree with this. What are your thoughts? And don't know what they agreed with. 
whether it was the rest of the article or the comparison to Sinn Féin, but that's what got me with them. Right. I, that's the only thing. I, I love that organization. And I still go in articles and click and like, you know. It yeah, I mean, that. Uh, you're, you're, you're level-headed. I think it's important for people to be able to say, well, if some people like this or whatever, you know, uh, you have the freedom. And that's why why you're here right. to go ahead and refute what has to be said. And I looked at your article, like I called you this morning and said, I am completely your boss on your response to the article. And that's why I wanted to have you make it. You know, it was weird. And I'm, I'm not very good on remembering you know, dates and facts and people's and names because there was so much going on. And I did not live there. I was going back twice a year for two or three weeks. But my father was involved. And so therefore we were involved. And, and his whole family was involved. I mean, my cousin, right in front, he, had a, he had a rubber bullet shot at him. Now, if you know about rubber bullets, they're about six to eight inches long, maybe about two inches in diameter. And they're supposed to be shot at the ground and then bounce. Well, the British Army, did, or the RUC, or the police, they shot them directly at you. Which could kill you. It went right through his, it went, it blinded him right in his eye. And that was in a peaceful protest. Nobody was armed. Nobody had anything. So there's a lot of propaganda that goes on that I know that most people, especially nowadays, don't know what happened back then. They were getting fed propaganda on the BBC One or BBC Two. They only had two or three channels. And then America would pick it up and say, look what they did. Like even the Irish Americans were against them because they were getting fed propaganda. So organizations, <clears throat> a few my father started, um, like you know, newspapers and certain organizations came about to not only educate the people, but to help the women and children whose husbands and sons were all just locked up with that, you know, internment with no release, no trial, no jury, nothing. They were just put in prison for years, for life. There was no, no trial and hundreds died. And, and, you know, to compare that to the Proud Boys, when these people were fighting to free their country, albeit some of it was violent, and the rest of it wasn't. I mean, I, I want to. I want you know. I mean, there are so many times that I, that you uh, characterize. Uh, let's say the IRA. Some of it was violent. Some of it was not. These were people that actually wanted a free Ireland, an Ireland, not a Northern Ireland and a Southern Ireland, right. like an Ireland, which, an Ireland, which is the country. But Great Britain, as usual, had to have its footprint footprints everywhere. Um, I mean, uh, when America wanted its liberation from the Great Britain, then they pretty much do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, I so mean, we, war we, is war. Right. We have to be cognizant about that and not just demonize folks for you terrorists, you good, you bad. Because well, that was the thing. You know, to label someone a terrorist, when I think I had written that piece to you, like, yes. the British Army was very good. The Irish, the IRA would announce, we're going to blow up a bus tomorrow at 12 o'clock on this bus route at this bus stop. So there'll be nobody there. Clear them out. We're letting you know. And they would do that on purpose because they they were all about destroying any any goods that would cost Britain money. Destroy a park. Destroy a bus. That's what their whole goal thing was. And then the British Army would get the codes and detonate the bus while people were on it. But the IRA already said they were doing it. So they had to take the blame. They take the blame. And it happened dozens of times. And, you know, after a while, you know, you start getting angry. So that's what that comes. And they are a well-formed citizen's army. Now, the Protestants had a well-formed citizen's army, the UDF. But they were backed by the English. They were not, you could call them up in the telephone book. The IRA was secretive. You, you couldn't call them up. You know, they wore black masks. You didn't know who they were. You but couldn't. UDF, you shouldn't, right. Right. The UDF, they acted blatantly. Came right out with guns, M16. And the police didn't arrest them. They were all Protestants. So it wasn't technically an Irish, I mean, a, a religious war. But underneath it all, it kind of was. You know, so it's betwixt and between on that issue. 
The Catholics wanted to be Irish, and the Protestants wanted to belong to the king. So that was the religious part of it. But to have the British government come in finally, the army, to save the people, to stop the violence, and then join it. I mean, like the people were like, what? And then the IRA came full-fledged. I guess that was in 69 or 70. Right. They became full-fledged. Now, you have to look at the context of every story, and that's the reason why I think uh, we need to make sure and have open discussion about how things really are. Uh, You know, uh, uh, many Catholics in Northern Ireland see things very differently than Protestants who want to be part of the kingdom. And not only that, they got a benefit from being uh, part of the kingdom. What many Americans don't understand is something that even occurred here in the United States and elsewhere is that many of the foreign lands, et cetera, in, in Northern Ireland were actually owned by English, protected by English folks who never stepped foot in mean, Ireland as the people starved. So well, that also like, had an right. economic component. I mean, the famine, I think it was- The 40s I, potato famine, yes. I couldn't, I couldn't find a link to it, but about 20 or 30 years ago, you, the humane, humane rights, Against whatever that organization is called, they had they they fined England for the, the the humanity what they did to the people in, in Ireland during the famine. It was like they had to pay like twenty billion dollars, right? Something like that. And I, I couldn't find a link because it was so old. It was probably before computers, but um, they had to pay a link for that, and there was no reason. I mean, that's like saying America lost corn. Um, thousands and millions, millions died because we had no corn. Ludicrous. And so was the famine. They, yes, they're big on potatoes, but it was meat in warehouses. It was actually during that time the biggest export of beef from Ireland. Why didn't you give it to the people? No. It's like in that movie, like, well, we can't um, get them out, we'll breed them out. So they starved us out. So many left and came to America and stuff, but Millions and millions died. And, you know, when you go with that background like that, and if you look at Ireland area, you'll see everything has little um, walls, rock walls. Right. Because only if you had land could you vote. So they would break it up and give a wee piece to their son. So maybe he could have a wee vote. And that's why it's all parceled up so much because of what happened. But, you know, then you add in all the other atrocities. You can't speak your own language. You can't, you can't speak uh, Gaelic. Instead, you oh, were you know, to speak English in the Northern I, Ireland. Yes. You had to secretly be taught it. And my uncle did. Well, a lot of people did. But you had to secretly learn your own language. But to their detriment, since they didn't know it, and we did. Now they couldn't figure out what the hell we were talking about. <laughs> so and that kind of saved my father because he was on the run for two years. I won't go too much into that, but he was on the run for two years and he would call and speak in like a code Gaelic. And we could understand him, but the FBI were going nuts. What the hell are you talking about? Because it wasn't just Gaelic, it was code. Right. But um, I mean, it, it was just, I don't know. So that article prompted a lot of, you know, a lot of back a lot. emotions, you know, yeah. a, a lot of emotions. And, um, that's why I wrote to you and told you that, you know, you're part of them. Like, I think they screwed up. Yeah, well, look, I'm glad that we we had you here to uh, to give your your perspective on the article and where the article went wrong. Like I said, unlike the author, you lived it. So, Bridge MCP, uh, last words. Last words. Well, thank you for letting me express this because it really bothered me. And, and... I'm, I'm glad that, you know, reading the other people's comments, whether it was on Facebook or on the, the man's actual article, many agreed with me. And um, so it, it brought about a lot. Um, but also, I want to tell you, thank you. I love your show. You got it right there. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Thank you and, very um, much. I yes. just bring that down. <laughs> and, yeah. and then I love your show. Your show was great. You're very fair. You're very honest. And you stand up when you say you make a mistake. You call people out on theirs. And we have a really good group on the PDR Posse. We have a great group, right or left, doesn't matter. 
Well, look, Bridge MCP, thank you so kindly for being a part of the PDR Posse. Thank you so kindly for helping us out at Politics Done Right. And, and rest assured that you always have a voice and all of us, when it comes to Politics Done Right, have a voice. Thank you so kindly for being on Politics Done You're welcome, right. Roberto. Take care. Welcome to the summer sizzle here at KPFT 90.1 FM. Houston, you know, we are in this short fun drive mode, but you know, you're still getting your program here, right here at Politics Done Right. Now, but I need to talk to you a bit. Um, we are moving into our new abode. We'll be moving into our new studios in the beginning of uh, September. And as, as you know, that means many of our costs will go up. But before we go in, into that, I want to urge you, first of all, to let others know about what we do here at KPFT. Not only the music that you don't get on air on the commercial stations, but on our shows that talk to the community, our talk shows, our news programs, our news opinion, news and fact-based opinion programs like Politics Done Right, ones that you're listening to right now. Uh, but this is the only place where you can get on adulterated truth, not biased by having to cater your words to what corporate America may want you to know and not know, we are here to just give you the truth. Politics Done Right and several other shows that we have on this station. Now, it's important for, for, for me to get across that, especially in this politically heated, polarized, time that we have a KPFT 90.1 FM Houston around. Why? You know, we, you, you, you listen to the newscast and you hear about polarization and you hear about how Trump is going to do this or the Republicans this, the Democrats that, progressives fighting against Democrats, etc., etc., etc. What does that really mean to you? That's what we're here for. First of all, let me say that the vast majority of Americans, left, right, middle, center, whatever you want to call it, I speak to a lot of people throughout the country, and I tell you, most of us, the vast majority of us, want the same thing. But you would not know that listening to your regular TV. You will not know that because we have forces that are trying their utter best. You must hate that other. And that other could be anything. That other could be somebody that looks different. That other could be somebody that has a different political party affiliation. That other could be somebody of another religion. But you break it all down and you find out that most of us want the same thing. Most of us have that intersectionality where all the things that we want for ourselves and our family are pretty darn similar. But we have those forces that must keep you apart. And that's why in all the narrative that I do, in all the speaking that I do, I make sure these doors are open for everybody. I am, honestly, a very progressive person. But I have uh, progressive relatives, conservative relatives, uh, middle-of-the-road relatives. And guess what? I love them all. I speak to them all. I enjoy them all. And it's the same with my friends. I have progressives, liberals, conservatives, right-wingers, Trumpists. Hell, I have relatives that are Trumpists as well, and I love them all. What am I trying to say here? 
there are forces out there, and mostly on, let's say, the mainstream media is one of the largest promoters of this, that their goal is to ensure that we keep friction among all these different groups. And why? Because if you are fighting each other, if we are fighting each other, then we don't look at what is the core of our problem. And that's what we discuss here at Politics Done Right, the core of our problem. I don't care who you are. You are a family member of the Politics Done Right posse. Because that's what we're here for. Engagement, truth, communication. So now, I ask you for that specific reason. Keep us on the air by keeping us funded. We don't get funded from anywhere else but you. Yeah, we may get a little grant here and there, but nowhere to cover what it costs to bring you the truth, to bring you the things that we bring you. So I ask you so kindly, make a commitment. Please make a commitment to a station, to a program that is not there to divide, a program that is not there to, uh, to try to bring a narrative, a corporate narrative to control your mind, but support us because you know we are needed. We are needed. We have to be a voice of reason. We have to be a voice of honesty. We have to be a voice of truth. So I ask you to make that commitment. Call 713-526-5738. Again, that number is 713-526-5738. Make a commitment to Politics Done Right via, or to KPFT via Politics Done Right. And, you know, we have a few gimmicks. We have, if you, if you give to KPFT Summer Sizzle between August 1st and the 13th, you'll be automatically entered into a drawing for one of two copies of Waiting for Columbus, a deluxe eight CD set autographed by all members of the band Little Feet. Winners will be announced on August 16. One entry per person, but don't let that keep you from supporting multiple times, multiple shows. For info on the drawing rules, just go to kpft.org. But please support us. Give us a call, 713-526-5738, or go to kpft.org as you give. Please remember to do it in the name of Politics Done Right to ensure that, they, that our leadership sees that the program is doing what it needs to do to ensure that we stay on air. By the way, we'll be coming to you multiple times a week, more so than now, live from the studio where we'll be taking calls. And like I said to many of you before, those of you who give KPFT, what, what, whether it's my books, whether it is some other offer that you find at kpft.org, anybody that gives over $120 to Politics Done Right in the name of Politics Done Right, I'll be arranging for those of you who want to, to come sit in the new studio with me as we do the show. And I mean that from the depths of my heart. Because like I tell both of my audiences, both my online audience and my KPFT audience, politics done right is yours. Politics done right is ours. We're here to do what's right. So please give us a call at 713-526-5738. Again, that number is 713-526-5738. 5738 or easy quick wig please go to kpft.org please remember to select that you are coming to uh coming that you're supporting politics done right 
with your contribution. And remember, you have several options uh, with many, many, many different offers as a, as a token of appreciation. But you can also support us by getting my book, As I See It, Class Warfare, The Only Resort to Right-Wing Doom, for an offer of $120. You can also get It's Worth It, How to Talk to Your Right-Wing Relatives, Friends, and Neighbors for a offer of $120. As well, you can get As I See It, How to Make or rather, how to make America utopia take away the economy from those who rigged it for $120. You get any combination of those books, either two or three, and we have offers that are very, 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 very efficient for you, if you will. 713-526-5738 or simply go to KPFT. Org. Please, folks, please do remember, your contribution to KPFT is a contribution to sanity. It's a contribution to political sanity. It's a contribution to unity of us Americans. Again, 713-526-5738. We speak about why are things so hard? Why are things so difficult? Why do we have this angst in this country? There are forces working to ensure we have angst, to ensure we have dissension among people. And these forces know exactly why and what they're doing because as you're enlightened, you become somebody who is engaged. As you're engaged, you ensure that we have an equitable society. And an equitable society means to many that they can no longer pilfer us all, that they can no longer take it all. That again, it is an equitable society. So there is reason for us not to complain about what they're doing to us but to actually make a difference and be a part of the solution. And I, I, I am telling you, my commitment as a, as, a, as, a, as a citizen of this country, I remember several times looking in the mirror as we went through the angst since the inception of this program. Before the inception of this program, I would always be looking and I'll be saying, why doesn't somebody do something about this? Oh my God, what CNN is saying, what Fox News is saying, what MSNBC is saying. Why don't they say this? Why don't they do the necessary things to keep people together? All the time, right? Then I remember one night sitting back and looking, just looking in in space, looking in a mirror, virtual mirror, saying, wait a minute. I'm always saying, why doesn't somebody do something about this? Guess what? I'm looking at somebody. It all starts with you, with me in that case, in that situation. And that's when polit- it, it used to be called poli- uh, liberal politics done right. But after doing liberal politics done right for a while, I wanted to be all engaging in working with the coffee party. And we wanted to say, no, this is for all Americans, everybody. Politics done right. No labels. Yes, I'm progressive. But I love everybody. I want everybody in. 713-526-5738. Again, 713-526-5738. Please be a part of the solution. KPFT.org. You can, you can support us at KPFT.org as well or at 713 526 Five seven three eight. Remember, you are ensuring that we can stay on the air, but it's not. It is something that we need to do. So I ask you one last time before we continue with programming: seven one three five two six five seven three eight seven one three five two six five seven three eight, or go to KPFT. Dot .org I promise you you will feel 
that you are a part of the solution as you support solutions. I assure you that we intend to be frugal with your contributions. I promise you that as far as politics done right, I am here to serve. I am here to provide truth. I am here to listen. And I am here to learn from all of you. 713-526-5738. Again, that number is 713-526-5738. Please be a part of the solution. Please uh, provide us some support in the name of Politics Done Right at KPFT. 713-526-5738 or go to KPFT. Dot org and let's get into continued programming at Politics Done Right. Thank you for your hearing. I want you to recall the vote in Kansas, the vote where all the polls looked like they were close. In fact, many of them even had that the abor- uh, uh, the abor- allowing the Kansas to change the abortion law at will was going to win. Not only were the polls wrong. The polls were dramatically wrong by orders of magnitude in in deltas, okay? And a lot of people look at this as it's strange why that is occurring. Well, I want to play you this, and then I want to give you uh, some more context afterwards. Check this out. Although Democrats still face an uphill battle in November, the last few weeks have brought them some wins, along with some structural changes in the parties and the fact that Trump is not on the ballot in the midterms, expectations of a Republican wave could be premature. One of the biggest changes in the parties over the last few decades is in education. In 1996, 27% of Republicans had at least a bachelor's degree, higher than the Democrats' 22%. But the growth in the Democrats' numbers since then has been more consistent and larger, while the GOP's share of highly educated voters rose slightly and then dropped back to 29% in 2019, 12 points lower than the Democrats that year. And these numbers matter because not everyone votes at the same rate. In the 2016 presidential election, the more educated the voter, the more likely they were to vote, with 47.4% of high school educated people casting a ballot versus 71% of those with a bachelor's degree or higher. So when a party's percentage of college grads falls, that may make it harder to get the desired voter turnout. But also important here is the drop-off in the midterms. Although it's expected, the margins matter. And after starting with the lowest number to begin with, turnout among voters with a high school education also dropped the most, a decrease of 8.6% from the presidential vote to the 2018 midterms. In other words, as the parties change, the GOP is trading people who vote more frequently for people who vote less frequently, while the Democrats are doing the opposite. And that trade-off may be magnified in midterms. And, you know, uh, I I don't understand why a lot of people haven't already seen a lot of this. Kansas was a perfect example of the vote. uh, You know, I spoke earlier about the calculations that they do to make polls, right? The model that they use, what percentage of each type of voter is going to be there? What is the definition of a likely voter? And I've been saying for quite some time, the definition of a likely voter is likely wrong. And why is it likely wrong? Because of the people that I meet every single day. They don't show up in the likely voter model, but they sure as hell going to vote. And we saw that in Kansas. And we're going to see that over and over and over again. So while the generic poll, guess what? Democrats have gone pretty much ahead in the generic polls, which means, I mean, generally speaking, because of gerrymandering, et cetera, they need to carry anywhere between a four to eight point in a generic poll to ensure a win. I don't think those days are still valid or those things are still true. I think based on a new likely voter model, we're going to see that the generic poll may be a little bit more or a little bit too biased towards the GOP. 
And what we're going to see is a lot of wins in places that we thought we would not have seen wins. If you doubt it, take a look at Georgia, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Ohio, and likely Arizona. Mark my word. Mitchell today did something on Meet the Press that rarely I find enough journalists doing, and that is challenge the person they are interviewing if they're not a Democrat. And what was amazing is Andrew Mitchell actually challenged a Republican senator on terms from a Republican point of view. I want you to listen to this, and then we'll take it on the other side, because what I think she did is extremely important. And I think journalists going forward must do this. So let's go ahead and listen to it, and then we'll take it on the other side. Given how casual he was about securing documents that's been well established when he was president, do you think that should disqualify him from being president again? And would you vote for him if he runs? I'll keep my powder dry with regards to, to your last question. I think right now we're going to focus on the 2022 election. We want to retake the House. We definitely want to retake the United States Senate. And I think in doing that, and our goal is, is to focus on what's going on right now with the American people. We're going to focus on the fact that inflation is still over 8.5%. Uh, we're, st we're still talking about GDP, which has been going down. And as you know, uh, sharing breakfast with the, chair, the former chairman of the, uh, the Federal Reserve, anytime you've got two quarters in a row, you are in a recession. We want to see us get out of that recession. And most certainly we want to see gas prices come down. They're still a buck and a half higher than when Joe Biden took office. Those are not good policies to run on for Democrats. We need to focus on that. Uh, and as we get past that and get into the 2024, I think the Republican will be well positioned. But uh, let's get past the 2022 election first. And we're not in a recession yet, but uh, we'll wait and see what does happen. And we really want to thank you. It's very good that you came on two, today. Two Senator quarters Rose. tell you differently than that. <laughs> Not uh, that that's out of right, date. Thanks. Out of date. Even according to Republican economists. <laughs> now, beforehand, I find it astounding, you know, last week we had Lindsey Graham uh in a debate with uh Blumenthal, Senator Blumenthal from I think Connecticut. And uh Lindsey Graham, while the Democrat tried to be bipartisan. Lindsey Graham came and said, I am not going to be bipartisan or pretty much this is not the bipartisan part of the debate. And by the way, we are in a recession. And Blumenthal didn't say peep about being in a recession. It took Dana Bass throughout the day to talk about the successes of the Biden policies, which, you know, when you take a look and enumerate them, there are a ton of policy achievements unheard of especially with a, a Congress that is almost even. But it, it turned out pretty good. Here we have another journalist on TV, surprisingly. I don't know what's going on. It's like these guys finally realize that our democracy is in trouble and that coddling recalcitrant or co uh, Republicans are, are coddling uh, sycophantic Republicans or somehow really continue to put us in danger. Notice that when he spoke about a recession, she comes back and she says, no, we're not in a recession. And then when he go, he, he, he makes that point to say, oh, Andrew, don't forget, you have breakfast every morning with an economist who should know this stuff. And by the way, Andrea Mitchell's husband is Alan Greenspan, who was the past uh, chairman of the, 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 the economic uh, chair and also... He's a Republican. So in effect, she said, by the way, sir, no, we're not in a recession. And even Republican economists vis-a-vis -vis my husband also says we're not in a recession. How can you be in a recession if in the last month you actually hired 500,000 more people? And that wasn't a decrease from the previous month, but an increase from your previous month. And what else did she say? No, that is outdated. But that defines who the GOP leadership has become, a, geo, a, a, a leadership of the past, a leadership that's not based on good information going forward. So Andrea Mitchell has to be given some kudos for finally, finally dinging a Republican as opposed to just letting their statements adopt its own ethos. So thank you, Andrea. Good work done. Remember, 
We are in Fun Drive right now, but you are still getting yourself a great program uh, that we work at putting together for you. Stuff that you, some that you may know on a small level, some that you may not know at all. That's why we are here. Politics Done Right, KPFT 90.1 FM, Houston. We're asking you to invest in this community radio station, but why? Because, folks, there's a lot of media out there, but it's not media that you control. It's not media that has your interests at hand. When we're talking about community radio, when we're talking about This community radio station, KPFT 90.1 FM, we're talking about a station that is solely funded by whom? You. And if it is funded by you, our loyalty is to you. Most other stations, commercial stations, they're funded by their advertisers and their advertiser needs to program you. And they need to have you in a particular modal. That is why our politics is so bad. Because we need you uninformed. Politics done right doesn't believe in that. Politics done right, KPFT 90.1 FM, Pacifica Network, we don't believe that. We believe that it is essential that you are in control. It is essential that you support us so that we can feed the ethos that we can give, we can enlighten with what is the absolute truth. In that light, I'm asking you to please call 713-526-5738 or go to kpft.org and support us. You can support us with a $25 membership, a $40 membership, or you can get any one of our gifts that you find there, please do this in the name of Politics Done Right. Also, remember that you can get one of my several books out there. As I see it, Class Warfare, the only resort to right-wing doom for a contribution of $120. It's worth it. How to talk to your right-wing relatives, friends, and neighbors for a contribution of $120. How to make America utopia. Take away the economy from those who rigged it. A pledge of $120. You can get any two of those books for $200. Any three of those books for $250. That is, in, that is to support our station. And all those books, I promise you, give you all that you need to have that conversation across the board to ensure, to help us make a better America. So please support us. Please support KPFT 90.1 FM Houston. Call 713-526-5738 or visit kpft.org. In the name of Politics Done Right, please select one of our books, several of our books, or one of our offers. We're here for you. You can get Politics Done Right Mondays through Fridays on Facebook Live at facebook.com slash politics done right. On YouTube Live at politicsunright.com slash YouTube. Please do not forget to follow me on Twitter for updates. My handle is at Egberto Willis, at E-G-B-E-R-T-O-W-I-L-L-I-E-S. Before you get started, please remember to keep your community radio station in your minds, KPFT in your minds. Talk about it. Tell your friends about it. Tell them you know about this station in town, 90.1 FM Houston, that needs your support, that is there to provide what that nour- nourishment that we need. 713-526-5738. KPFT.org. Visit us online. Contribute online. KPFT. 90.1 FM. You can visit us at kpft.org. Alleged, alleged pedophile congressman Matt Gates, uh, he decided to really give it to Pence. Oh, Pence cannot win. Who cares? It the, the silent thing nobody's talking about is Pence doesn't stand a chance. Well, it turns out that Pence's uh P- Pence's guy. 
went on to CNN, Pensive Chiefs of Staff went on to CNN, and he really threw some shade on good old Matt Gates. I want you to listen to this, and then we'll take it on the other side, because this one is a doozy. Republican Congressman and Trump acolyte Matt Gates went out of his way recently to bash Mike Pence's chance at a presidential run in 2024. Let me just say what everybody here knows. Mike Pence will never be president. <laughs> nice guy not a leader. The vice president's former chief of staff didn't have any trouble offering up this pretty stinging response. Well, I don't know if Mike Pence will run for president in 2024, but I don't think Matt Gates will have an impact on that. In fact, I'd be surprised if he was still voting. It's more likely he'll be in prison for child sex trafficking by 2024. And I'm actually surprised that Florida law enforcement still allows him to speak to teenage conferences like that. So I'm not too worried about Matt Gates. Ouch. Ouch is really the word. Ouch. Oh, by 2024, this little punk will probably be in jail. You know what? There's a darn good possibility that that will be the eventuality. So he may want to hope that he can get a Donald Trump into office because maybe a Donald Trump in the office is the only way for this guy to stay out of prison. And remember, again, it's only Donald Trump that would likely give him a pardon. No, no other Republican would, and definitely no Democrat or progressive would. Wow. That one was a doozy. Made a lot of sense. I am going to make an issue out of what Eric Hayes just said. I want you guys to understand how indoctrinated we are as Americans. Here is what Eric Hayes know that I support, not support keeping people in jail, uh, having them get out of jail on their recognizance and put some restrictions on them. If they fail that, they go back to jail. But here's the deal. He says, Egberto, what is your impression of the five out of six arrested in Houston for stealing Cadillac converter already out on bond? Are they thugs or nice people you like? They're thugs. All right. And I think both of us agree that they're thugs. They are taking something away from Americans, right? They're stealing from Americans, all right? Let's look at the oil companies now. The oil executives that said, we are going to cause these gasoline prices to raise. Even though there's not a real oil shortage, but we lie. Even though there's not a real gasoline shortage, but we shut refineries down uh, purposefully so that we can have a reason to say why gasoline prices are, are higher even with an oil glut. Or we just willy-nilly carry the price of gasoline over five bucks because we can. We have price and power. How is that any different? They are picking your pockets. One does it behind closed doors or one does it quietly. The one does it openly. I take your money because I can. When an oil company charges you $5, that's unrecoverable money they took because they could. They stole because they had license to steal. But we look at those executives as upstanding people, good people. They have caused the deaths of more people than the catalytic converter stealer, th thief. These Thugs in executives' offices in oil companies have caused more debts. These thugs that run power companies have caused more debts than any puny thug stealing a catalytic converter. Yet in our capitalist society, we decide, oh, those are still upstanding executives. But those guys that are there cutting your catalytic converter, they're thugs. I ask you, stop being indoctrinated and call those catalytic converters thieves, thugs, and call those executives sitting down in those, those skyscrapers that are causing the price of oil to be what it shouldn't be. They are thugs as well. Please get one of my several books out there. As I see it, 
Class Warfare, the only resort to right-wing doom for a contribution of $120. It's worth it. How to talk to your right-wing relatives, friends, and neighbors for a contribution of $120. How to make America utopia, take away the economy from those who rigged it for a pledge of $120. Get any two of those books for $200, any three of those books for $250. The contributions from my books go directly to support our station, KPFT 90.1 FM. Alternatively, folks, please get your basic KPFT-only membership for $40, a Pacifica-only membership for $25, or choose from one of our many other gifts for your contribution. Just go to kpft.org. Choose Politics Done Right for the program and select an option either for our books or something else to support the station. It is definitely worth it. You can listen and or watch Politics Done Right Mondays through Fridays on Facebook Live at facebook.com slash politics done right or on YouTube Live at politics done right dot com slash YouTube. Please do not forget to follow me on Twitter for updates. My Twitter handle is at Egberto Willies, at E-G-B-E-R-T-O-W-I-L-L-I-E-S. But don't you forget, listen to us live on air at KPFT 90.1 FM on Thursdays at noon and at Fridays at 11 a.m. all central time. Please remember to keep your community radio station in your minds. Keep KPFT on your mind. Talk about it. Tell your friends about it. Tell them you know about this station in town, 90.1 FM Houston, that needs your support. That is there to provide that nourishment that we need. KPFT 90.1 FM Houston. Well, folks, that's it for today. You know how I'm going to end this baby. My name is Egberto Willis. This is Politics Done Right. And you know how I end this baby. I am what? Out! Welcome to Politics Done Right. I am your host, Egberto Willis. This is a progressive program that will take the mystery out of politics. This is the program that will encourage you to make sure government becomes we the people. Whether you are liberal, progressive, conservative, or otherwise, you get to hear your point of view. We are an independent media outlet that unlike mainstream media beholden to corporations, we only owe allegiance to you. Remember, you can also send me a tweet at E-G-B-E-R-T-O-W-I-L-L-I-E-S. That is at Egberto Willis. Let us engage. It is politics done right.